All right, what's up traders? What's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We're going to break down big tech and the disaster that big tech has been and whether or not, you know, there's potential for some of the other big tech names like Apple, you know, um, to really come down and test some of the pre-pandemic highs or possibly even pandemic lows. Uh, we're going to take a look at Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, companies like that, and just show you guys really what's going on in the market and whether or not, you know, there's a huge disaster coming in 2023 or whether or not this is actually a great opportunity for some long-term investments. Now, none of this video is going to be financial advice. Uh, I do want to shout out that I do viewer requests every single week. So if you want to see a technical analysis video, breaking down some of the key levels, uh, if you're looking at trading for the near term or the short term, um, I'll be happy to do that for you as soon as I can. Okay, so taking a look, starting off here at Amazon, we can see from its highs, this thing is down massively. Okay, it's fallen over 50%. The price of Amazon has been cut in half. And what we're looking at is we're seeing it blew right through the pandemic highs, right? So these are the pre-pandemic highs on Amazon right around 109. And it's coming down to potentially hit our pandemic lows. So <clears throat> to keep things in perspective, Amazon has grown as a company and their business has improved, okay? Even though earnings forecasts aren't as good, technically right now, you are able to buy a better company, okay, at the pandemic lows than a couple years ago, right? Then, you know, the coronavirus, um, you know, the whole COVID situation. This is really just amazing, right? And this is really some good opportunities. It doesn't mean that we can't break through these pandemic lows and head down lower, possibly even test these lows down here. Um, you know, that wouldn't surprise me if things just want to keep collapsing. But you, when you think about things and think in perspective, right? Remember, when you're buying a stock, you're buying an actual company, right? And you're gaining a small percentage in ownership of that company. So what you're able to do now is you're able to buy Amazon, a better company than it was almost three years ago now, right? Because it's 2023. Happy New Year's to everyone watching this video. But the company has improved, okay? Now, forward guidance isn't as strong, okay, because of the whole economy. And really, we have unprecedented times right now. We've never had quantitative tightening before ever in the history. And on top of that, we have a super aggressive Fed raising interest rates at a very aggressive rate. Um, so, you know, that's why a lot of these things are being priced down. All of this was in the free money period, right? This is all free money, right? When interest rates are at zero and you're able to take loans out at, you know, really just historic rates. So that's why, you know, a lot of the market was just rallying so much and going up so high was because of this zero interest rate policy and because of the Fed and quantitative easing. Now we've got quantitative tightening. We've got rates going up and things are dropping back down. The next one we're going to take a look at is going to be uh, Netflix. Netflix has been obliterated. Um, you know, Netflix also, this is something that could happen to Amazon. Okay, so we can see here Netflix has actually um, broken. It's not only its pandemic highs, but it's also broken its pandemic lows right here. Okay, this is the bottom of the COVID crash right here. And it's blown right through those. So you have to keep it in perspective. You know, Amazon, yes, you are able to buy a better company uh, at the same price you were able to buy it years ago. But that doesn't mean that the price can't go lower. And that doesn't guarantee that the price has to go higher. You have to keep things in a perspective, okay? Um, from its highs to its lows, uh, Netflix just took a monster, monster dump. Um, this was, it went down 76%. Currently, it's down about 57% from its all-time highs, um, you know, and again, just breaking through the pandemic highs, breaking through the pandemic lows. Um, another one we're going to look at is going to be Google, okay, Google, Google McDougal, right? Now, Google has held up relatively well, okay, uh, definitely not performing well, but when you look at, you know, Amazon and Netflix, right? Um, this has performed a little bit better, right? We're still above our pre-pandemic highs right over here, and then we're still well above the pandemic lows. So <clears throat> a lot of people say that there you haven't really seen capitulation in the market until those big names that have really just been nest eggs for in investors, institutions, until you see those capitulate, you haven't really seen a stock market bottom. So when you put this into context, yes, companies like Amazon and Netflix have tanked a lot. Um, and they are part of the fang, right? Uh, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. Um, 
But, you know, you see Google is still holding up really, really well compared to some of the other stocks like Amazon and Netflix. Uh, you know, so if these things start to capitulate and you see Google coming down to its pre-pandemic highs and if Google breaks down and heads to pandemic lows, um, you know, those are some of the signals and signs that I'm going to be looking at to say, hey, maybe potentially we're getting near a stock market bottom. Because we're starting to see some of those big names that institutions have been holding on for years and years really start to dump and people are really selling those. Once once these stocks in particular like Google and Apple really start capitulating, um, that's how you're going to know you're, you know, you're getting towards near of a bottom. OK, um, the next one we'll look at. We'll go ahead and just take a look at Apple real quick Okay, because Apple. Um, has been going through a lot recently, right? If you look recently, Apple's been very, very bearish, right? Like two, three, four weeks in a row, this thing has just been dropping. That has a lot to do with China, okay? Um, and, you know, it, it would be reasonable as well, right? With the whole economic situation, interest rates going so high, we have quantitative tightening. It wouldn't surprise me if some of these companies do come down and try to test their pre-pandemic highs. For Apple, that's going to be right around $82 a share, now there's lots of support. Okay. We have, um, you know, we've got some support down here. We've got some support here. There's definitely lots of support where we could bottom out on Apple before, but again, you want to keep things into perspective. And if we just go ahead and take out our fib tool and look from the COVID lows to the all time highs. Okay. We just broke through our 38.2 retracement level. So, you know, now that we flipped this area from support, notice how we bounced here and got a very nice bounce, got another bounce here and we've broken this level. If we stay below 133.50 on Apple, most likely, you know, we're most likely we will try and retest this level at some time. But if we get rejected and head down lower, we're going to be heading towards 118 and then 103. And once we break those, that's when really we could see that reversal rather than a healthy retracement, right? The way retracement levels work is you see a large move up and then you get a sharp pullback and you continue that trend. You retrace back healthily to your three major retracement levels. So, you know, <clears throat> using the FIB tool, it's it would be very healthy for Apple to come back down to 103. That would be a perfectly healthy and normal retracement down to the 61.8 retracement level and ultimately continue higher. But, you know, we have to pay attention to 133, 118, and 103 right now. Those are going to be the main levels that we could consolidate through. Um, if ultimately we break through those, uh, most likely we're going to come down to these pre-pandemic highs of about 82. Now, another one we're going to look at is going to be Meta, okay, formerly Facebook. Now, everybody knows that Meta has been just completely obliterated, okay? There's no secret there, guys. Uh, this thing has blown through its COVID highs, its COVID lows, um, and really just been ultimately just decimated, right? If we look from the highs here down to the lows, this thing dropped 77%. Currently, it's only down about 68%, 69%. But this thing has just lost tons and tons of money, right? We see the COVID lows. Uh, the pandemic lows are right here around 136. We had the pandemic highs over here at 225. We've just completely blown through those guys. I mean, look at this, you know, no support there at the pandemic lows, no support there really at the uh, pre-pandemic highs. It actually became a uh, level that we flipped to a major area of resistance and just continued, continued uh, really, you know, capitulating to the downside. Um, another one we're going to look at is going to be Microsoft. Okay, Mr. Softy. If we take a look at Microsoft, again, this is just like Apple. This is a company where it would make a lot of sense for us to come down and test our pre-pandemic highs. If we take the fibs from the COVID lows right here up to our all-time highs on Microsoft, we can see that we're holding the 61.8% retracement level, which is going to be right around 215. Okay. If we break below 215, it's very likely we're going to come down and test these pre-pandemic highs at about 191. Remember, when you're using the FIB, it's, you know, you have your strong move to the upside, get a healthier retracement to the downside, and then you get that continuation of the trend. As soon as you break through these levels, right, that's when you get your reversal and you, you know, you get the reversal and the end of this bullish up cycle where you get the continuation. So, you know, Apple holding up a lot better in, you know, retrospect to the market as a whole. Uh, but this is a really good example of, you know, just the major retracement levels working. We came down to our 61.8 retracement level here at around 215. It's a strong level of support. Now we have 241. We have, you know, basically retesting it right now. So we're going to see if we can continue to, you know, get above there and flip that to support and try to trade higher. 
but below 241, most likely we're heading back down to 215. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for today's video. Uh, just kind of wanted to update you guys on big tech right now and really just give you guys the landscape and understand the situation. There's going to be a lot more pain in the market, in my opinion. Uh, now, whether that's early in the market or whether that's later on in Q2, Q3, uh, no one's really going to know. But there is a, a strong potential to also reach a possible bottom in the market uh, once the Fed stops, you know, raising rates so aggressively. Uh, really, we need inflation to come down. I did a very good video on why I personally think, based on the data, that rates are going to continue to go higher as we see global rates continue to go higher and why inflation could be a lot stickier and stick around for a lot longer than anticipated. So it's a really good watch, lots of good charts and data in there. Uh, if you feel like watching that video, it's going to be right here.